E gridate, 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 sai a me che me ne importa. E parlate, parlate, io fingerò di ascoltarvi per l'ennesima volta. And speaking of Marx, <laughs> in what aspect was Marx right about cap modern capitalist economists when he spoke of that? And in what aspects did he fail in his provisions? The, the, the first question is, is capitalism an exploitative form of social organization? And uh, the answer is uh, yes. Okay. And when people hear the word explo exploitation or exploit, Uh, you know, they, they put all sorts of moral or ethical uh, connotations to that word. Well, yeah, there are moral elements there. There's no question about it. But the main, and Adam Smith and Ricardo have the same position, actually. You know, production comes out of labor. And whether it's in the form of living labor as we sit here or as, well, not that we're laboring very much, but, well, you guys are, uh, mm -hmm. or in the form of machines or whatever, because machines represent previous production that was the result of labor working with previously produced machines, and then you go back and all that. And eventually it's somebody picking up a rock and... <laughs> you know, using the first tool or whatever. Okay, so, yeah, human labor. Um, now, the important thing, though, beyond that, is that capitalism is an accumulating economy. Accumulate, accumulate, Moses and the prophets, right? What does that mean? What's the objective of capitalism, right? To live the good life, to produce a decent society, to produce joy, uh, and the answer is no, right? The, the, the purpose is to accumulate. To what end? So that accumulation can, can, continue, can continue. There's no real objective to the social organization, and that means that it increasingly becomes, in a sense, dysfunctional, right? Uh, that it doesn't serve human needs, right? So, uh, you know, I think if you're looking for sort of a core element of Marx, it's, it's those two, uh, exploitation and accumulation. <coughs> and the one depends upon the other, right? Now, in what ways was he wrong? Um, well, I mean, you can go beyond that. There's a lot that is every time there's a crisis and increasingly these are financial crises well in a sense they're always financial crises sales of his work go up because people are looking for answers and they can't find it elsewhere now you're going to find some fundamentals in Marx that are quite applicable today But you aren't going to find an analysis of the modern financial system, right? I mean, the guy's writing back in the second half of the 19th century. We're now in the first half of the 21st century, right? So things have changed, right? So uh, a lot of what Marx... Well, for example, let's take the tendency for the proletariat as the working class to become increasingly immiserated. In Italy, in the United States, France, Canada, we don't see that. But capitalism is a global system. So if you look at it from a global perspective, right, you see that tendency. Why not the United States? Why not Canada? Why not Italy? Well, you have the formation of workers' organizations that mitigate that, that work against that, right? And Marx speaks to this, right? But it's, so, 
you know, a lot of people would argue, well, he's, he, he had to be wrong in his fundamentals because we haven't seen this happen. We've seen concentration and centralization of capital, which he predicted, but we haven't seen the immiseration. Are we sure we haven't seen the immiseration? With the decline in the union movement, what's been happening, right? More and more people find themselves in poverty. Uh, and is that the natural tendency of capitalism, right? Uh, well, think about it. Wages are a cost of production. If you want to, if your objective is profit, you want to keep those cost of production down. And as wages are a primary cost of production, there's this tendency to push them down, unless there's resistance in the opposite direction. And that's the union, right? And with the disintegration of the union movement, you know, race to the bottom, that kind of stuff. Um, now, with regard to where he was wrong, I think there's any number of specific points that you can talk to that may have been very well true for the time in which he was writing, but which have been, in fact, modified as a consequence of historic movement, right? Uh, the question is, is the general theory still sufficient to accommodate those changes through modifications in that general theory, right? Now, for example, do we have the old-fashioned capitalist of Marx's day? No, we don't. Well, we do, but they're in somewhat different form, right? Uh, if you go to the work, for example, of some UMass Amherst uh, theoreticians, they would argue that the uh, modern-day capitalist consists of the principal members of the boards of directors of corporations, so that you don't have this sort of individual capitalist out there is more or less like a collective form of capitalism. I'm not so keen on that myself, but I understand the significance of the boards of directors. I think what you've got to do is look at the specific members of the board of directors to find out who's really running the show. But that's another story. The point is that capitalism has changed, right? So some of the specifics that Marx addressed and made arguments surrounding are no longer valid. Uh, but, again, can the general theory be modified? Now, Veblen modified it, uh, and I would argue, I'm one of those who argued, who would argue that there is, in fact, a very close relationship between Marx and Veblen. You talk to institutionalists, many institutionalists, and say, nah, 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 right? It's two different things totally two different things, and they point to his ninth, Veblen's 1906 essays on Marx, except that if you read the essay, he's mainly addressing Marx's followers who began to transform Marxism into something else. Right? Uh, that, that requires a close reading of Veblen's uh, essay. But th that's, that's a different story. Does it, does it have to be modern? Can you incorporate Keynesian theory into it? Well, there are some who have examined Keynes and Marx and showed, again, a symbiotic, uh, very close relationship, right? Can you incorporate Minsky into that? Uh, if you... Minsky's obviously dead. If you talk to Minsky, he might say it's all in Marx that even the foundations of his financial instability hypothesis are found in Marx. Because Marx speaks to the instability of capitalism. Right? It's not a stable system. It's not a harmonious system. It's not an equilibrium-seeking system. It's a, it's a destabilizing system. Uh, so, uh, can Veblen be incorporated and therefore modified uh, modify Marx? Can Keynes, and therefore modify? Can Minsky, and therefore modify Marx? Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, others would disagree, because nobody, I mean, this is the problem with academics, one of the problems with academics. 
you always have to say something a little different than anybody else in order to establish your ground, right? Well, that's not my position. I would rather seek uh, agreement. But the agreement is not to be based upon simply compromise. The agreement has to be based upon some underlying theoretical foundation that we share. And again, getting back to that first question, heterodoxy, we don't share that underlying theoretical foundation. And there's that problem, right? So there's never going to be agreement, in my humble opinion. Well, it's not, not so humble, uh, but it's my opinion. <laughs>